Welcome to the Revit Tutorial Lesson 4. After this lesson, you should be able to draw the whole structural model. We will go to the roof floor plan, and draw the floor slab and beam first. Then we will jump back to the first floor to create the column and beam. Finally, we will create the room on upper roof floor. We will practice the floor slab creation first. The difficult part is not the skill but the understanding of the floor slab boundary. Then, we will learn more about structural beam. Let's get start. Let's start by creating floor slab on roof. While we are drawing the floor slab boundary, remember to check if there is level difference. If there is more than one level, we need to create few floor slabs on the same floor. We can type the dimension while we are drawing line. Be careful of the edge and end point. Sometimes you need to zoom in. Also, we can use Trim Tool. It can help us to draw boundary lines. Click the Trim button or press T and R. Then select the side from first line that need to keep. Then select the vertical line. Then the useless line will be trimmed. Then continue to draw the lines. Type the dimension when we draw the line if we know the value. Also, we can type simple calculation for the line drawing. Keep checking the right hand side window for reference. Let's go to the bottom left part. Sometimes we can draw one line in two times. By make good use of the grid line. Use the information that we have on right hand side window. Grid lines can also help us to identify the position. So, keep using grid and dimension on right hand side window to help us. Here, we can see that the boundary line is 150 mm away from the grid line. We can firstly connect the boundary line to grid line first. Then we draw another 150 mm line backward. A warning pops up telling us that there are overlapping lines. We can ignore this message. Then select the first line, the longer one. Now. These two lines are separated, and not overlapping. Finally, we can delete the short line. Because this line is only for us to measure 150 mm. Here is the way to draw a line 150 mm away from the grid. Finally, finish the floor slab. In offset, type 0 and enter. Let's change to consistent colors. Let's check the level of the floor by spot elevation. The short key of spot elevation is E, and, L. Next, we are going to draw the beam. Beam is a structural element. It can transfer the loading to column. Most of the time, structural beam should be under the floor slab, 
so that it can support the floor slab loading. In this lesson, we will focus on the bottom right hand corner. It is a room for the heavy water tank. That's why the structural layout is more complicated than the other area. Let's go to the structural tab and select the beam. Just like wall, we click one point on plan, and then drag the beam out. Now, we still cannot see the beam. We can change it to wireframe mode. We can adjust the beam length by dragging the dot at the end. Let's continue drawing the beam. Now, let's try to create different size of beams. Click the duplicate button. The B value and H value are representing the width and depth of a beam. The B value is the width. Let's change it to 400. We can also apply same tools skill. For example, we can use trim function by pressing T and R. Then select the first beam. And then select the second beam. Two beams will connect to each other. Let's continue to draw the beam according to the right hand side window. We still have to duplicate the beam with different sizes. We need to move the beam to align the grid line. Select the beam and use Move tool. The short key of Move is M and V. Click the edge of the beam to align. Then select the grid line. Next, we will use the Trim tool. The short key of the Trim tool is T and R. Then select the first beam. Then select the second beam. You can see that two beams are connected. If we drag two beams together, they will automatically connect to each other. A warning may pop up while we are drawing beam. It is because the structural element can be used to calculate the structural loading. We don't use this function in this lesson. So just ignore it. We can roughly draw the beam according to the layout first. Then we can adjust the position of the beam. Use the dimension tool that we learned before. Or simply press the short key, D, and I. After we have the dimension, we can select the element that need to reposition. The dimension value will turn blue. Now, the dimension is editable. Let's click the blue number, type a number or formula to change the dimension.
you can choose to use short keys for command. But you can always find the tools at toolbars. Remember to select the element first. Then the dimension should be turned blue. Then, you can change the dimension and the position of the element. Also remember to press equals before the formula. Remember to use correct size according to the right hand side window. If two elements are too close to each other, move the cursor to there and press Tab key. Finally, we will go back to roof floor and upper roof. This room on upper roof floor is the final task in structural model. After creating this room, we have learned most of the skills for structural model. Let's go to the roof floor structural plan. If we apply color on floor plan, we cannot see the structural beam. Because they are all under the floor slab. However, instead of turn off the color and make it transparent. This time, we will learn a proper way to view the beam on structural floor plan. Under the properties window of structural plan, there is a discipline row. Let's click the architectural. Select the structural option. Now, we can see the beam. The beams are shown as dotter lines, which means that they are under the floor slab. Then, we will draw the wall for the room. This room is for storing the water tank, which we will learn how to draw it in the coming lesson. So, let's go to the structure tab and select the wall button. You can see that the wall is aligned with the beam. They are both 150 millimeters away from the grid. We can make good use of it. We can see that the wall is not aligned with the grid line. The red arrow indicate the grid line, and the green arrow indicate the wall setting out. Select the beam, and press M and V to move the beam, in order to do the alignment. Here is another way to the wall. Right click the wall, select the create similar button. Then you can draw another wall. Press T and for trim tool. Select the wall to change the dimension.
you can type a dimension while you are drawing the wall. Not just the dimension of the wall, but also position of the wall should be taken care of. Select the wall, so that we can reposition it. Then click the blue dimension. Change the value according to the right hand side window. Again, I will join the beam to the grid line. Let's align the last wall. Finally, we need to create the floor slab on upper roof floor. Even though we are on roof floor plan, we can still create the floor slab for upper floor. Just change the level in the properties window to upper roof. Also, change the offset to zero. Instead of drawing simple line, we can select the rectangle line. Then, draw the rectangular on plan. Drag and drop the rectangle from top left hand corner. Click no for attaching the wall. Because we want to control the connection of the wall by ourselves, let's go to the 3D and see the result. Press E and L for the spot elevation tool. Place it on the upper roof floor. We can see that the walls are not attached to the upper roof floor. Let's select the wall and adjust the height of the wall. Move the little blue arrow down to make it connecting to the upper roof. Let's do it again for other walls. However, Instead of moving the blue arrow, we can change the top offset by entering the number. Finally, we finish the upper roof room. From lesson 1 to 4, we learned a lot structural modeling skills, such as creating grid lines, floor slab, column, and beam. On top of that, we now are able to edit them in size diameter, material or other constraints. After this lesson, you should complete the structural model. Also, you can finish it with the structural drawings.